How's it going guys? Riley here with Dark Arrow. Quick tutorial for you on how to take a long piece of carbon fiber tube and cut it into shorter sections. Let's talk quickly about the actual tubes themselves. These are filament wound, uh, meaning that they basically are manufactured by taking a spool of carbon fiber filament, winding it around a mandrel with a machine. The filament is saturated with resin as it's wound and then it's cured. After it's fully cured, these particular tubes are sanded to final dimensions so they have a tight tolerance on both the inner and outer diameter, which was useful for us in our control system application. These tubes show up in the rudder pedals in the control system of the Dark Arrow 1, so having the ability to take a long piece of stock and cut it into shorter sections is an important skill to have to complete your airplane build. It's not too difficult to do, but there are a couple little quirks with cutting carbon fiber tube that's different than cutting aluminum tube. So I thought it'd be good to highlight those. So let's get into it. High level of the process is just you mark the position of your cut, cut the tube off, and then you sand the tube to your final length dimension and clean up the edges of your cut. Let's actually cut one of these though so you can see the details of that process. Okay, first off, let's talk about safety. For any of the steps in this process involving power tools or where you're cutting or sanding, you're gonna to wanna to protect yourself with safety glasses, hearing protection, some gloves to keep dust off your hands, and a respirator so you're not breathing dust. The tools required for this project are going to be a workbench. Uh, this one is two feet by eight feet. You're gonna want some decent amount of space to work. Also, you're gonna need a Sharpie or marking pencil, tape measure, masking tape, an oscillating cutter, a clamp, shop vac, and then a square and a disc sander with a table and a 90 degree guide. I've got 120 grit sandpaper on the disc sander. Something around that grit level will work. First thing, I'm going to mark my cut line on the tube. Uh, the initial tube stock is 72 inches long and I'm going to try to cut it down to 26 and a half. I've got a nice clean uh, edge from the factory on the tube stock. If uh, you don't have a clean edge, don't worry about it. We'll address that later. Uh, start by measuring from the end of the tube, and I'm gonna make my cut line at 26 and a half, plus some change. Uh, I wanna add in a little bit of extra so that I can sand it to final dimension. So I'm gonna go uh, 26 and uh, 1 16th beyond 26 and a half. I forgot to mention it in the section on tools, but the silver sharpies show up really nice on the carbon fiber tube. Okay, so I got my mark 1 16th beyond 26 and a half. I recommend at least that amount of extra safety margin. Now I'm going to extend this mark all the way around the tube by applying some masking tape circumferentially. Uh, you're going to want it set up perpendicular to the tube axis. This is a little bit of a finicky step. Uh, takes a little trial and error, but not too bad. Okay, see how I wrapped it all the way around and it's meeting up just in line all the way around. Okay, so now I can use this masking tape as a guide uh, when I cut. I'd like to add uh, some lines on here just for reference. So my arrows are going to tell me what side of the tape to cut on. I don't want to forget. And last thing, we'll double check the measurement. I'm looking for 1 16th inch beyond 26 and a half. Looks great. We're ready to make our first cut, so get your PPE on. I'll show you my setup with the shop vac here. The idea is I'm going to try to use the shop vac to collect any of the dust that is generated from cutting the tube. So clamp your shop vac on the edge of the table and position your cut right in front of the shop vac. If you're cutting shorter sections of tube, you can alternately use a bandsaw to make your cuts. Remember to set up your shop vac to collect dust. I failed to do that for this shot. I completed my cut. You can see it's a little bit ratty. So we're gonna wanna clean this up and make sure that the final cut is perfectly 90 degrees relative to the tube axis. 
Okay, so you're gonna want to remove masking tape, get it looking like this, and then we're gonna take it over to the disc sander and true up the cut. First off, I'm going to check that my disc sander is set up uh, nice and square. Just my square here. Check this square on that axis, and then also check that it's square on this axis. That looks good. I say that because some of these, like this unit, can adjust, tilt, and uh, this can change in angle. So don't trust the tick marks on here. Double check it with a square. One other recommendation I have for your sander setup is to connect your shop back so that you can collect dust that's generated from your sanding operation. Most of these little sanders have a shop back connection. Definitely recommend using it. If you don't have that, uh, another thing you can do is just clamp your little shop back attachment on the table locally. You might have to experiment with this a little bit to get it to collect dust properly. And then when you do get to sanding, go easy on your pressure where you're pushing the tube against the disc. These disc sanders are pretty powerful and they can remove a lot of material quickly, so just take your time. When you finish sanding, the tube might have some sanding dust inside of it, so be aware of that you can clean that up with the shop vac. I just have the edge cleaned up on the tube, and the next thing you want to do is check your length. See where you're at uh, in terms of how close you are to your desired final length. As you can see, I'm still a 16th inch over the desired 26 and a half, so I'm going to keep sanding on it and then creep up on that 26 and a half dimension. I have my two ends all squared up and it's trimmed to 26 and a half inches. Now the last thing I want to do is come in here in the end and I'm going to sand the corners on the edges of the tube. I recommend again setting up your shop back, clamp to the edge of the table, and then you can do your sanding right in front of the shop back to clean up any uh, excess dust. So here's your final result. As you can see, it's not crazy difficult to cut a carbon fiber tube. Not a whole lot different than cutting a metal tube. Biggest nuance is just being mindful of your dust collection so that you're not breathing dust or getting it all over the shop. If you have any questions or if anything was unclear in this process, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any ideas on how to improve this process, I'd like to hear from you. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.